Hello and welcome to the most informative, interactive and educative show, The Grand Debate. And I'm your moderator, Kazia Masuka. Well, we get to have a show with a battle of wits against different universities. Our visiting university today is Nkwami Nkrumah, all the way from Kawe, and Cavendish University from Lusaka. Cavendish is being represented by Zofwa and Mary and Kwame Nkrumah by Given and Natasha. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Well, if you're watching The Grand Debate for the first time, this is a show that brings about topics that affect us, prominent topics right here in our country, and also issues around corruption. This show is brought to you by TIZ. I kindly remember that TIZ does not support any political party or any candidate. Theirs is to help us fight corruption by any means necessary and, of course, in government systems as well. Well, the grand debate is here with an interesting topic this week, and we'll be letting you know more about it when we come back from our commercial break. Welcome back to The Grand Debate. As you'll be watching The Grand Debate, which is brought to you by TIZ and with the combination with Live Access Zambia, we'll be bringing to you intriguing debates on prominent issues affecting and surrounding corruption, analyzed by our TIZ judges. In this debate, we have rules and regulations. The visiting universities that are going to be participating in this debate will have a topic at hand, and they will get to be the proposing or opposing team. Once they are proposing their motion, they'll be given five minutes to debate their issue and an extra 30 seconds will be told to them by our timekeeper. And after the 30 seconds are up, they will have to sit down and give now a uh, point to the other team to give their opposing or proposing view. They will go back and forth until they'll be given their closing statements. After they give their closing statements, they will also hand in their supporting documentation, which will be given to our judges. Any falsified documentation will be a disqualification. I'm sure our universities are very prepared. They look prepared to me, and of course, this is so exciting. And also remember that the topic at hand today is past governments. Have they been effective in fighting corruption? Have we heard the question? Okay, well, past governments have put in measures to fight corruption. Some of these devices have been sensitization and also the corruption perceptive index with tools that highlight the problem of corruption. We'll be given an option to the proposing team to start first, while the opposing team takes a seat. <coughs> Today, it's ladies first. Wow, that's a change. That's great. Last time we had gentlemen and ladies, but Mary, please take a stand. Thank you very much. Bonafide, dignified affiliates of this delegation. Corruption is like a cancer, which remorselessly eats away the very moral fiber of the society and causes harm to the developmental efforts of that society. Members of the auditorium, my name's Amber Lazi Mary, standing in front of you proposing the motion which states as I articulate. Have past governments been effective in fighting corruption? Members of the auditorium, the motion again simply states, have past governments been effective in fighting corruption? End of quotation. Members of the auditorium, allow me to say all protocol be highly observed. Bonafide, dignified affiliates of this delegation, as the first speaker from the proposing delegation, it is my duty to break down the motion to its levels of simplicity. But this is, this is done by simply identifying the key terms of the motion and also defining them. Members of the auditorium, the key terms of the motion are as follows. Past, governments, and effective, as well as corruption. Now, members of the auditorium, allow me to define the word corruption. Corruption, members of the auditorium, has been defined by various philosophers. But my area of interest today is the definition that has been given by our very own legislation, which is the Anti-Corruption Commission Act number 3 of 2012. Bonafide affiliates, pass one to section 3 of the Anti-Corruption Commission Act number 3 of 2012, 
corrupt or cor so let's say corruption has been defined. The word corrupt was defined as mean the, uh, the so soliciting, accepting, obtaining, giving, promising, or offering of a gratification by way of a bribe or other personal temptation or inducement or the misuse of abuse of a public office for advantage or benefit for oneself or another person. End of quotation. Another definition, which is much simpler, has been given by the World Bank. The World Bank simply defines corruption as, allow me to quote, corruption is a form of dishonesty or a criminal offense which is undertaken by a person or an organization which is entrusted with a position of authority in order to acquire illicit benefits or abuse power for one's personal gain. Now, members of the auditorium, another key term that has been given in our motion is simply the word government. Members of the auditorium, the government is simply the body with the power to make and enforce laws to control a country, a land, an area, people, or an organization. Another definition, members of the auditorium, is that of effective. The word effective, members of the house, simply means being successful in producing a desired or an intended result. Let us not forget the word past. The word past has been de defined by the Oxford Dictionary to mean gone by time and no longer existing. Now, members of the auditorium, having given the key terms, uh, having, given, having given the definitions of the key terms of the, of the motion, our role as the proposers is simply to enlighten you on the measures that the government, that the past governments have put in place and how effective these measures have been in the fight against corruption. How the effective these measures have been to curb this corruption. Bonafide, I will look at some of the measures that the governments have put up, uh, that have put in place, and I will not focus on the current government because our motion was very clear by saying past governments, members of the auditorium in air courts, past governments. There, and then our second speaker is simply going to look at some certain issues such as sensitization on the effects of corruption. He also look at the creation of the anti-corruption commission. He also look at the rule of law, democracy and the Corruption Perception Index. Members of the auditorium, with these few um, points, allow me to end here. I will come back in the second session. Thank you, Mary. Kwame Nkrumah, please take a stand. Corruption, whose effects we live with day to day. Today, when you think of the health sector, you will remember how much you've been impacted and affected what comes to your mind is the honeybee scandal, corruption. A woman, a helpless woman in Mpika district did not receive her social cash transfer. Why? Corruption. Dignified dignitaries in the House of Debate, before I dive into my intellectual argument, it is therefore my duty to first run you through our argument progression and we shall progress as follows. I'll first give you the key terms definition of the motion then I'll go to the current situation of corruption in Zambia. I'll further move to the measures that the governments have put in place to fight corruption. Further, the second speaker will come and look at how effective are these measures that have been put by the past government into place. Now, intellectual chamber, allow me to define the key terms of the motion. First and foremost, allow me to first adopt the definition by the SECs, which was given by the proposing side. It was very accurate. Allow me to also add by paraphrasing or rather borrowing the definition by Transparency International, which says corruption is an abuse of entrusted power for public gain. Intellectual Chamber, the next word that I'm going to define is effective, which means successful in achieving a desired result. Apart from that, allow me to also define the word government, which simply means a group of people who have been entrusted with the, with the role to control and make decisions for a country, a state, or territory. Intellectual chamber. It is important to first highlight the fact that in Zambia, since 1964, we've had three different government, governments laid by five different people with different agendas. But one thing we must note is, these different people who've headed this nation have one thing in common, which is how they have failed to effectively fight corruption. 
It is because they have failed to fight corruption that we are here debating and actually giving an answer to the question that has been asked in the motion, which is, have past governments been effective in the fight against corruption? We, as the opposition, say they have not effectively fought corruption. Now, intellectual chamber, where am I getting this idea of saying the past government have failed? Statistics, they say numbers don't lie. Intellectual chamber, allow me to first bring to, to your attention that in, the 19, in, in 19, 1964 up to 1991, we had a government that threw this nation and did not do much on corruption. A government that took over, which is the MMD government, equally did not do much. This is shown in the statistics of the of the corruption perception index from 1999, 1998 to 19 to 2020, which shows that Zambia, since its independence, or Zambia since 1999 till date, has not performed any better than 40. Now, what do I mean? The perception index is simply an outline of how countries or how a nation is perceived in terms of corruption. The higher you go, the better you're doing in a fight against corruption. What do I mean? If a country stands at 88 over 100, then their corruption rates are lower. A country that stands at zero is actually has more corrupt activities going on. Now, Zambia, in the past, in the past 20 plus years, has just been faring within 30 and 38, which shows that the past governments have literally done nothing to effectively fight against corruption. As if that is not enough, intellectual chamber, allow me to also bring to our attention that the Global Barometer Africa 2019 survey by Transparency International Zambia says that, states that, about 70% of the respondents responded to say the government have not been doing anything in the fight against corruption. 70% 70, 70 of the respondents. Now, intellectual chamber, we are not a selfish opposition. My, 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 my second speaker will come through and give you the alternatives how to better fight corruption. Since the means and the measures that have been put by the past governments have failed, therefore we're giving you solutions to the problem so that we end and curb corruption. I submit. Thank you. Your time is actually up. Thank you, Natasha, for that opening statement. Cavendish. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson, for that long-awaited opportunity. Members of the House, my name is Mubangan Sofwa. To the adjudicators, members of the House, to the viewers, all protocols be highly observed. Now, the redefined motion by my first speaker, have past government been effective in fighting corruption? Now, members of the House, as the proposition, we agreed to the statement and we said, yes, past governments have been effective in the fight, in fighting corruption. Now, members of the House, I want to highlight to this House of debate the past governments that Zambia has had to date. Now, we had the UNIP, which ran from 1964 to 1991 by our great Dr. Kenneth Kaunda, may so rest in peace. The second government that we had was the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy by Frederick Chiluba from 1991 to 2002. The third was the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy as well by Levy Patrick Mwanawasa from 2002 to 2008. And the other government that ruled this great nation of Zambia was the Movement for multi Party democracy, which was ruled by Rupia Banda from the year 2008 to 2011. Now, our argument is based on the fact that we've had such a number of past governments. Now, members of the House, why are we, as a proposition, saying yes, it has been effective? Yes, what yes, what past governments have been doing has been effective in the fight against corruption. Why do we say so? Issues to do with sensitization. Now, members of the House, let me highlight to the House that since 1964 to 1990 when the UNIP was in power. We had the creation of the University of Zambia. Now, this ensured that the educational system was one that could facilitate education that would give people an idea about corruption and on the effects of corruption. Members of the House, sensitization enables each and every person from different societies and different areas of the continent to find out and to know about corruption and how things are moving. It creates transparency. Let's look at the education system in Zambia. Now, children, children who are in grade four, three, five, even to 
great day that able to learn in social and development studies, even civic education, on the effects of corruption. Members of the House, this is a means of sensitizing members of the House things to do with social media. Now, people through various social media platforms, such as this one, are able to know on issues to regard corruption. Members of the House, such things are solid evidence which say, yes, what past, what past governments have been doing in fighting corruption is effective. Members of the House were looking at issues to do with the corruption perception index. Now, members of the House, as the opposition said, statistics do not lie. Now, members of the House, when you look at the rule of the past governments that I mentioned in my opening remark, we're able to see that there was lower level of corruption. Now, members of the House, it shows that each and every, each and every, each and every criteria that they brought in order to fight corruption did work, and it is working up to now. Members of the House, okay, furthermore... Your time is up. Thank you. And Kwame Krumah, your turn. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. <clears throat> Corruption is indeed a cancer, one that cripples the nation from its very core. I am not apologetic when I state that corruption has claimed more lives than the First World War and the Second World War combined. Because corruption robs us of a future. It robs us of resources and finances that could be used to buy a ventilator that saves lives, or even build a school that is secures future for future generations. Intellectual Chamber, my name is Given Kapolio. Family opposing the motion. Have past governments been effective in fighting corruption? The very clear answer is no. The measure of effectiveness is one that we cannot run away from. Effectiveness yields success. Effectiveness yields positive results, achieving the intended goal. And if the intended goal has been fighting corruption, and yet we're still battling with corruption, then the answer is really very simple. There has been no effectiveness in the fight against corruption by past governments. Intellectual chamber. It is very simple. We as an opposing side are not saying past governments have not done anything. We are acknowledging that they have taken strides to fight corruption. We are acknowledging that they have done the little that they can, but have they been effective? The answer is simply not. Transparency International Zambia website is very quick to highlight that for the fight against corruption to be effective, there are certain things that should be in place. And these are promoting transparency, accountability, as well as high levels of integrity. Have these things been existent in our past governments, in the measures that they have put in place? Certainly not. Intellectual chamber, past governments in fighting corruption have shown no transparency. There has been little information that has been shared with the public on decisions that are made on issues pertaining the running of this country. Finances, for instance, even our debt situation, just sharing information on how much they've acquired what the terms and conditions are has been difficult, which is a clear interpretation that there has been no transparency and therefore the fight against corruption has not been effective. Members of this chamber, let's talk about, let's talk about accountability. We have the Auditor General's report that is released each and every year. It releases information on how misappropriation of funds has existed in these past governments. Have the culprits been held accountable? We can count them on one hand. We can count the very few that have been held accountable. Therefore, they have not been effective because there has been no accountability in the fight against corruption. Integrity has also not been existed. I do rest my case. Wow. Um, the universities have definitely brought the fire. I can feel the passion in their voices. They have researched. I hope the judges that are listening and the viewers that are watching are getting to learn a lot about this topic. We go to the rebuttal and closing statements from Cavendish University. First speaker, please take the stand. Members of the auditorium, the opposition simply said numbers don't lie. 
And indeed, numbers do not lie, members of the auditorium, because according to the Zambian corruption rank provided by Transparency International Zambia, it has been shown that the levels of corruption in 2010, 2012, and 2014 were massively lower than the levels of corruption in the period 2016, 2018, and 2020. This is simply showing that whatsoever measures that the previous governments had put in place to combat corruption were truly effective. Now, members of the auditorium, allow me to take you back in time during the Mwanawasa's government, the Mwanawasa government, members of the auditorium. During Mwanawasa's rule, members of the auditorium, we saw a rise in the corruption, anti-corruption commitment. Members of the auditorium, Mwanawasa has been praised for his efforts to combat corruption. And members of the auditorium, this can be seen in the establishment of the task force that was established in 2002 by Mwanawasa. The task force members of the auditorium were simply established to investigate allegations of corruption against the former president Chiluwa, may he so rest in peace, and also two of his associates. Members of the auditorium, the task force was indeed effective in combating corruption because we saw the two associates being punished uh, with certain, uh, certain corruption offenses. And members of the auditorium, Chiluba was also charged with six counts of theft by public servant. Members of the auditorium, I take it back again to a time when we had the Rupia Banda government. That was in 20, 2009, somewhere 2009 and to 2011. Members of the auditorium, during Rupia Banda's government, we saw the launching of the national anti-corruption policy, which was launched in 2009. This was a measure that was put up that was put forward by the Rupia Banda government to combat corruption. And members of the auditorium, according to the statistics that we have, there was an increase, there was uh, the, a reduction in the level of corruption in this period compared to the current state of corruption. Members of the auditorium, what was the essence of this national anti-corruption policy? It, the essence was simply to provide comprehensive audits in all major ministries and public agencies. It also harmonized and coordinated all the efforts in the fight against corruption in order to reduce the levels of corruption, which we indeed saw. Further members of the auditorium, during Michael, Sutter, Michael Sutter's uh, rule, that was 2011 to 2014, we also saw a reduction in corruption levels compared to our current state. Members of the auditorium, when the late president Michael Sutter came to power, he simply stated that he would intensify the fight against corruption, which we indeed saw. What did he do? He reintroduced the abuse of authority clause, which was repealed by the former government. Members of the auditorium, he, time is up. Please give me one, one no, minute. Thank you. The rules thank apply. We will now be uh, asking uh, Kwame Kruma to take the stand with their rebuttal and closing statement. Thank you for the call. I'll begin with the last point of the national anti-corruption policy. Intellectual chamber. One thing that we must praise our governments or the past governments or the current government is their ability to create very beautiful policies, executing them, implementing them is where the problem comes in. Quite okay, the pre-current speaker talked of the fight against corruption under the Nawasa government, how he fought and saw to it that Chiluba had to pay for his debt or rather his criminal activities. Intellectual chamber. Again, that is something that our country is well known for. Laws only apply when it's beneficial to the person applying it on the other person. Intellectual chamber, a Chiluba case and his counterpart does not solve the problem of corruption that we had or we have and we continue to have. That is just a pinch of salt in a drum or in an ocean. That is not solving the problem of corruption or effectively fighting against corruption. When you fight it with one person or against one person, you're not fighting it for the, entire, uh, for the entire country, which actually loses and actually faces the effects more than the person that you've actually attacked. Now, intellectual chamber, apart from that, they've talked about the reduction in cases of corruption between 2010 and 2016. Intellectual chamber, like I earlier stated, those reductions did not even go close to 40%. If I get 40% in my assessment, I get disappointed. Now, what is 38%? What is 38 out of 100? Intellectual chamber. 
Let us not just be misled by the fact that it has reduced. To what percentage, to what extent? Is it adding to the effectiveness of fighting against corruption or is it just mere reduction? If you tell me today that fuel has reduced by 20 in way, it is a reduction, but to what benefit will it be to my pocket? This is exactly what the government of today should put in mind as they're talking about reduction. To what extent did we see our country at least being ranked at least one of the least, least corrupt countries in the world? No, even as we speak today, Zambia ranked 117th most corrupt countries in the entire globe. It is shameful. Let us not defend what is wrong. The fight against corruption begins. Well, interesting. Uh, they're bringing the fire to their rebuttals and closing statements. We would like to, Mr. Jovo, so far, I'd like Mr. Sofa to come up and close. All protocols be highly observed. Now, members of the House, let me highlight to the judges and to the House of Debate that our current motion and our focus is on the past governments. Talking about the current government is indeed a great misdemeanor. I would love for the judges to take note of that because the opposition is basing their facts on the current government. Now, members of the House, allow me to move further. Past governments have been effective in fighting corruption. Why do we say so? Because of sensitization, corruption perception index, the formulation of the anti-corruption commission, because of the rule of law and because of democracy. Now, members of the House, when we talk about democracy members of the house according to exhibit a and exhibit d which i earlier gave to the judges it gives a clear a clear line of evidence to say indeed past governments have been effective in the fight against corruption now in the other in the other evidence that i presented to the judges members of the house it sets out a powerpoint presentation on the functions of the auditor or, or on the auditor's general office now he is there to create transparency between what's happening in the government and to the citizens at large now members of the house all these measures that are being taken by the past government have proved to be effective members of the house in exhibit in exhibit d members of the house in exhibit d it shows that indeed there was an upward of the rule of law members of the house in the past government of 20 in the past governance of 2012 we see here that there was a case of rupia banda who allegedly stole through corruption 11 million us dollars now the law did not say no this person is a big government official but the law took its course and justice was served members of the house in another feminine in, in another famous case of 2012 Exhibit C, I presented to the judges. It is of the Honorable Minister Luyato, who allegedly stole 2.1 million kwacha and took it in his house. All acts of corruption. What did the law do? What did the past government do? They ensure that the law took its course and the money was refunded. Now, members of the House, allow me to move further. Members of the House, the members of the House, the opposition keeps basing their argument on the fact to say, or the fact to say that we've got a lot of cases. Members of the House, cases are there. But have the past government ensured that they brought methods to curb and to reduce? Yes. Members of the House, allow me to move further. Now, according to an article that was done by the Transparency International Organization, extracted from their website in Exhibit C, which I sent to the judges, they say that when there's democracy in a nation, there are low levels of corruption. Now, members of the House, we know that democracy is the rule of the people, by the people, and for the people, meaning it creates that transparency between the government and the people. Members of the House, allow me to emphasize that saying what the past governments did in order to curb corruption did not work or is not effective is a great misdemeanor. Issues of sensitization. This very debate is a means of sensitization. People are being educated online. People ha are having knowledge on the effects of corruption. All these things that were introduced in the past by past governments. Now, members of the House, according to Exhibit B, which I gave to the judges, it has the Anti-Corruption Act, Lord, which... I rest my case. We stand so far. Sorry about the job, you know it happens when you're bilingual. It means the same thing. And uh, not to say it's the least, not last. Closing statement, <coughs> given. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator. In rebutting to the points raised, my job is made very easy this afternoon. First of all, I speak of past governments. I do refer to the just past government because the dissolved government is a past government, so it's still applicable. The government that has been in operational from 2011 to 2016 is a past government, so it's still very applicable that we make reference to the occurrences of even last year because the dissolved government is a past government, and the PF government was dissolved, making it a past government. They speak to how 
they submit evidence uh, of how um, the Auditor General's report is supposed to promote transparency. Okay, we agree with you. Transparency. So now that the now that the nation knows, we then go quiet about it and we say we are effectively fighting corruption because we have put the information out there about how resources have been mismanaged? Absolutely not. You get no round of applause. That is not effective fighting corruption. Effectively fighting corruption is when the Auditor General's report releases their report. The Anti-Corruption the anti -corruption Commission, whose mandate is to ensure that they prosecute corrup corruption in the country, then must take it up and ensure that they do their job. The, the proposition boasts about how past government put in place the Anti-Corruption Commission as a decoration because year after year after the Auditor General's report is out, and we expect that, okay, the, trans the, the information is out there, can the accountability now take place? Nothing still happens. We are able to list a few cases because they are a pinch of salt in a drum. These are very few, the cases of Austin Liato. By the way, he was, even after laundering so much money from this great nation, he was given below five years. That brings me to their rule of law that they speak about. This weak rule of law that will just have you kept away for two years and you're back and you continue with wherever you buried your money? Absolutely not. We do not call that effectively fighting corruption. Effectively fighting corruption would have yielded positive results. In a class of 50, if you pass 49 this year and the next year you pass 48, you have made an improvement. Is it an effective improvement that impacts the lives of your people? It definitely isn't. When governments begin to effectively fight corruption, my grandmother in Chinsali will feel the burden lifted off of her. Each and every Zambian citizen if governments were fighting corruption effectively, would feel the burden lifted off of them. And that is the truth. Members of this intellectual chamber, we speak of sensitization. Past governments have carried out sensitization. Yes. Has it been effective? Certainly not. Majority of our citizenry is, Ill, is, not, is illiterate. And the messages and the sensitization that past governments have carried out have been for the elite. Look at me here, a proud Bemba girl who should be discussing corruption in my native language so that even the lowest of a person in Kasama understands it. I'm here discussing it in English. Is that really sensitization that is meaningful? Is Members of the house, I do submit. Thank you. Well, this is the grand debate. If you're watching, we'll be going to another topic um, in our debate, and this will be the cross-examination. You do not want to miss it. It will be a battle of wits as the participating parties throw different questions at their opposing and proposing team, and we get to hear what they have to say on the spot. Join us after this break. Welcome back. You're watching The Grand Debate brought to you by TIZ. Really remember and kindly note that we don't oppose or support any political party or candidate, but ours is to fight corruption on all levels, especially the government system. Uh, that being said, well, we are at the cross-examination section. This is the section I really love because it's a battle of wits. I hope you have prepared your questions. And let me just go over the rules and regulations for that. You'll be given, you'll be thrown one question from the opposing or proposing team. You'll be reminded that this is an equal opportunity floor. You cannot interrupt your colleague at any point. And please uh, remember that you're given one minute to answer this question. And once your time is up, you have to sit down and give chance to the other team to respond. Members of the House, I quoted the first speaker state that the investigation and prosecution of Chiluva and two other associates by the task force did not benefit the public because it was just between the government and the respondents. Now, members of the auditorium, did this same punishment act as a deterrent to would-be offenders? And therefore, members of the auditorium, what does, what do, uh, the, what does the opposition suggest to be the relevant punishment for acts of corruption? I think I was earlier misquoted. What I said was, in as much as those people were punished, the real corruption that is going on within the country, compared to those two cases that were handled, the benefit of curbing corruption at the highest level, at the country level, is more than two cases that were actually 
um, that were actually um, were actually persecuted. That was my statement. Now, intellectual chamber to further ask to further answer the question, which has been asked to say what what punishment is best for offenders, intellectual chamber. I must bring to light that corruption cases, corruption uh, criminal cases are usually bailable. Now, intellectual chamber, in order to curb this corruption. In the past government, we've noted that corrupt, the most corrupt institutions are the government institutions. How effective are the strategies, or how are you convinced that the strategies that have been put in place by past government have actually yielded the needed results? Okay, thank you very much. So that's that's a very, very simple question. It's it's very simple. So now in these public facilities or in the public sector, we've ensured that each and every company and each and every employee has got a policy. Now these policies are ethics, which ensure that people do not indulge into corruptive actions. This is evident in the issue where we had uh, 12 secretaries that were dissolved by the head of state due to acts of corruption. And when we look at public institutions such as universities, we introduced issues of student union. Each and every public institution has got a student union, which creates transparency between the management of the school and the students. So it is very, very simple. Members of the House, the policy, like I said at first, and members of the House, we ensure that there is transparency in each and every one of these public institutions. Now, it is the duty of the Auditor's General Office, like I alluded in my first argument. So I thought the opposition was paying much attention. But like I said, it's a very simple question, members of the House. Thank you. With, with pleasure. Now, members of the House, the opposition team bears their argument on the fact that, first of all, they said what the past governments have been doing hasn't been effective, to which we totally disagree to, because we say it has been effective. So over the past years or during the rule of the past governments, we've had introductions of democracy by the great Chiluba. We've got introduction of separation of powers. We talk about the judiciary, executive, and legislature, the anti-corruption commission, and their act of 2012, the Auditor's General Office, ETC. Now, all these things were applied by past governments and are still working today, as we can see in the case of Chishimba Kambuli versus the people, ETC. Now, having stated my statement, what does the opposition think we can implement further, having looked at all these different methods and committees that we've brought up? Respond to that, please. So, in responding to your question, sir, we do stand firmly that the fight against corruption by past governments has not been effective. There's better things that could be done. First of all, strengthening institutions. We have an Auditor General's report and, a, and an anti-corruption commission that is a bulldog, a toothless bulldog. Give that bulldog some teeth and see corruption be curbed. One. Two, let's have fast track courts for corruption. Corruption cases drag on for so long by the time it's dealt with, the essence of it would have been diluted so deeply, introduce fast track courts for corruption. If we can fast track uh, courts on traffic offenses, then something as serious as corruption should have a fast track court. Let people be investigated and prosecuted immediately and quickly. If, say, if, a, if a leader is being investigated, let them step down, let them be fired so that the process can happen smoothly. Separation of powers, you say? Which separation of powers? Your time is up. Thank you. If you have a question, to go to the other team. Cross-examination is getting hotter and hotter in here. Thank you very much. My question is uh, directed to the first speaker from the proposing side, who defined uh, the word effectiveness, which, is, which has been the basis of our, deba of our debates. Uh, you defined effectiveness as uh, succeeding or achieving the intended goal. Based on this motion, the intended goal is fighting corruption. If we have, and you claim we have succeeded at it, if we have succeeded at fighting corruption, why are we here and still fighting it? I do need justification. If we have succeeded at, if we have succeeded at fighting corruption, why are we here and still fighting a battle that you claim we have succeeded at? Members of the House, that's a very simple question. Now let us give 
teeth to the so-called bulldog of the Anti-Corruption Commission. It is an act that is independent from any ultra interference whatsoever. Let me respond to your question, madam. Now, members of the House, one thing that I want the House of Debate to understand, members of the House, is that past governments have been effective in the fight against corruption. It is in the past tense. Now, I assume that the opposition knows their grammar very well. If you refer this motion to the present situation or to the current situation, that is a great misdemeanor. Now, members of the House, we are saying that, yes, indeed, what the past government has been doing has proved to be effective. I mention again democracy. I mentioned the Anti-Corruption Commission. I mentioned separation of powers, executive, judiciary, and legislature. She asked where the separation of powers is. I advise, read your books, because each and every body of government acts independently without any interference according to the constitution of zambia amendment act number two of 2016 i do rest my case that has been the cross examination section as we'll be going to break we get our leaders and our judges to go through what has been proposed from their supporting documents and also everything else that has been said from the closing rebuttals uh, closing statements and of course the ever exciting cross-examination section we'll be back to find out who the winners of this debate will be What an interesting debate. It really kept me on my toes. Um, and I, I was running back and forth with regards to the counter arguments. It was really neck and neck for me. Um, just a feedback to the proposers, especially the first speaker. I do feel that they you spent too much time in terms of definitions and you didn't open any arguments for, for your motion, which was a lost opportunity, because I do feel that if the first speaker had opened the argument a little bit, then the second speaker wouldn't have had all the pressure to give all the arguments for, for the team. So th that was just one of the things that I, I noted. I do feel that both teams offered uh, convincing arguments for their case regardless. And so my decision was based on the cross-examination and the responses part of the debate. And on that note, I do feel that the opposers handled themselves well and they were able to respond to the questions and give examples and convincing arguments for why they were opposing the, the motion. And for this reason, um, I, I believe that the opposers took the day with regards to this round of the debate. Thank you. So basically my assessment or analysis to the two groups is that um, the, the Cavendish uh, University group um, uh, did uh, research, but I think their research was uh, uh, limited. Same applies to the Kwame Nkrumah, because when you look at uh, uh, what they, their, their reference points have been TIZ, ACC, uh, without mentioning uh, any other uh, institution that deals with uh, corruption related matters. So basically to me, I think uh, their research is, uh, is limited. They needed to do more so that they can have uh, uh, justifiable evidence in what they are, they are uh, speaking to. Uh, further to that, um, when you look at uh, 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 Cavendish University, I think uh, uh, they lacked some points to justify uh, in terms of uh, the prevalence of uh, COVID, uh, I mean the prevalence of corruption and so forth and so on. Uh, Kwame Kuluma had uh, a lot of evidence and uh, they were also, uh, I think, fluent uh, in what they were uh, 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 talking about. You could uh, see from their debates and point submission that uh, they have uh, some form of coordinated the sort of uh, sort of a debate, meaning that they took time to think through uh, what they were speaking to. Uh, then, in terms of uh, uh, responding to questions, uh, we could see that uh, uh, Kwame Kuruma, I think, was more prepared than uh, Cavendish University. Cavendish University had to, uh, I mean. 
move around okay to try and bring out a point but for Kwame Nkrumah when they are asked a question they could go straight to 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 to, to the point so basically i think um, well all the debaters were addressed well and uh, it was really a tight debate but i think uh, based on these uh, technicalities that i've mentioned uh, Kwame Nkrumah takes up the day according to my assessments Welcome back to the grand debate. This is the hardest part. I am glad that I get to step out of this and leave this to the experts. <laughs> Mr. Bright Chizonde from TIZ is here to let us know what the judges deliberated on, what their findings were, and who the final winner is going to be. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, being given the tough part of the debate, <laughs> Okay, so let me run through the uh, five comments from the judges. Uh, first of all, uh, we believe that the teams did not do uh, adequate research because most of the information they were presenting uh, came from Anti-Corruption Act, uh, TIZ, and TI. Okay, so that's the first comment. Then the second comment uh, in the debate section, we believe that the debate was neck to neck, very close call. Um, yeah, so I think this has been one of the closest, we can say, in the debate we have seen compared to the other debates. Then the third comment, we believe that the proposing team uh, did not provide much evidence on the effectiveness of fighting corruption. And then the fourth comment, we believe that uh, Kwame Kuruma did well in terms of answering the questions which were asked to them. And then lastly, uh, both teams were very smartly dressed. On that one, uh, we give all the points. So it is there for our assessment that uh, Kwame Kuruma has won this uh, particular round of the debates. Congratulations. Who will be stepping up to? Okay, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. We'd like to have a closing statement from our participating callers. And of course, our winners will also give us a closing statement. A vote of thanks. All right, so I would love to thank the organizers of this program. And I just hope that it's not the end, but the beginning of the beginning, because we need such such events and we need such information to be sent out to the public. Yes, and congratulations to Kwame Nkuruma. I enjoyed the debate. Thank you. Congratulations to you as well. You've been a worthy contender. Uh, we're very grateful uh, to TIZ for this opportunity to have come and deliberated on something as important as corruption. It's important that we as young people begin to have such constructive discussions around corruption because the truth is, it may happen today, but we will be the most affected. Five years from now, 10 years from now, we are the ones that will be paying back whatever mismanaged resources that are there. So we must begin to have these conversations. We must take interest in them. And uh, kudos to TIZ uh, for such uh, an initiative. A simple plea would be that in as, we are, in as much as we are having them, it would also be important that we move beyond just having them in English and also cater for a wider uh, spectrum of our population so that they also understand um, corruption in, um, deeply and whatnot. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank you for everyone that came through and participating, the schools that have allowed you to take part. And as always, thank you to TIZ for this opportunity. But this is not the beginning. This is not the end. We might be coming to your university. We might be coming to your college. So you need to stay tuned. Support your local team, as the adage said. But you've been watching The Grand Debate. Join us next time for more interesting and intriguing topics that affect you.
Transparency International Zambia is the leading anti-corruption crusader contributing to Zambia's development based on a culture of integrity, transparency, and accountability through the promotion of good governance and zero tolerance to corruption. For more information, follow us on our Facebook page, Transparency International Zambia, or email info.tizambia.org.zm.